As you guys know, I've done a couple drone videos lately, and I just did another one. And, and it, I haven't released it yet because I have a, a date that I need to release it by. So I'm not going to show you that one yet. But I am going to do some comparison between that drone and the previous one I did because they have a couple different types of, of stability supports on the cameras. And I want to show the difference between the two of them. So let's get started. This will be just visuals. So I can identify the first drone. This one we're looking at is the DRC. That's D-E-C-R-C. D-R-C. D65 drone. This one features a 14.4 or 1440p camera. So 2550 by 1440p. It has been upscaled to 4K. So 3850 by 2160. The beauty of this drone is it has an active gimbal. It has a mechanical two axis gimbal. This is important. As you'll see, when I move the drone side to side, the picture is going to remain level. The one that's going to follow, I'll let this one show you some pictures from this one for a few minutes. And uh, the one that I'm going to show coming up is actually the next drone that I'm going to review. And I'm not going to reveal what brand it is now. You'll see that when I do the review over the weekend. I've got all the photography shot now. I just have to put it together. It has a true 4K camera, but it uses electronic image stabilization as opposed to a mechanical gimbal. And there are differences in terms of the actual image quality um, as far as the picture goes, stability-wise. This is superior. Look at that house there with a the golf green. They got a golf green on the roof, if you can believe it. This is my neighborhood. That house is on the market for, I think, $3.8 million. They got a gr golf green on the roof. And they got another green roof on the shed. It's like, yeah, okay. In fact, earlier in the year when I had that video of the, the house being torn down, that was that's what's gone in there, those two homes there. So I put this one up, put the drone up, and just did some shooting around my neighborhood today just to kind of play around with it and get a feel for how the cameras work one thing i did notice but the difference between the two drones that i have is that the other one which i will remain nameless i won't tell you what it is in this video because i don't really have the authorization to publish a video of it just yet the the uh, company that sent it to me to evaluate asked for me to publish it after the 20th so I'll show you guys the footage that I shot today, and then you can see the footage that I shot yesterday in the storm. I, I put it up in a storm to see how it would handle the uh, the wind, and it, it, it actually worked quite well. But yesterday was, was relatively windy. Today, it's not so bad. A little better day for shooting. I guess right now it'd even be better because it's sunny out. But um, anyway, um, other some differences between the two of them this camera this one here I'm just tilting the camera up and down and uh, flying it back and forth and so forth just so you can see how smooth it is by comparison to what we'll see off the other drone because it uses a different stabilization and it's noticeable in the picture um, anyway one thing I noticed about the other one is that my height was limited I had a geofence. Even though the airport's quite a ways away from me, the other drone, I guess it was its, it's GPS is geofenced in. It wouldn't let me go more than 100 meters from my house. Whereas this one here, I, I could go a lot further than that. So there was uh, certainly some differences in how they are actually programmed. But I just, I just kept it in the neighborhood. I didn't go that far. But uh, this one I did get to the point I took it way up enough I, I'm not way up yet I'm going to go much higher than this but uh, I did take it much higher up than the other one and uh, I got it to the point where I lost sight of it I couldn't even see it I had to use the return home function to get it back because I'd lost all visual sight of it it was gone
We're watching, obviously, the stability as I move the camera side to side, or move the drone side to side. I call it the camera, because that's what it is. It's a flying camera, right? That's all these are. These are flying cameras. They, they are very light, and you can't carry a payload with these. I guess maybe some criminals might try to carry a payload, like a cell phone or something, to drop into a prison. But these are designed as aerial photography platforms. And as such, I really think you need an active mechanical gimbal. It just gives you that smooth picture. As I move the drone back and forth, the horizon stays level. I'm tilting up and down the camera now. As you can see, I'm a little bit behind, a little bit higher than the trees. Actually, quite a bit higher than the trees. And those trees are over 100 feet tall. But I'm going to go way up, as we're going to go up now. So I'm going to take this thing way up now. Almost to the limit, I think, of what this one would go to. And the ground is going to get a little smaller as I go up. Yes, those clouds are kind of ominous, aren't they? They're calling for a major rainstorm to pick up tonight and into tomorrow. There's a storm that's brewing. As you can see, we're, we're getting up pretty high now. We're, we're probably 300 feet or more right now. I didn't look at the uh, altimeter on the uh, display as I was shooting this, but I'm over 300 feet for sure, probably closer to 400. Of course, this demonstration is to show how well the drone hovers. And it's great. Even when there's wind, and there is wind up there. There's more wind up there. I'm looking up at the drone, and I can barely see it at this point. And the thing is, you, uh, you, can, hear the, you can hear the motor changing, and you can hear the props changing as it's, it's fighting to stay stable. But it's actually doing a very good job. All right, now we're going to look at the other drone, this one here. Again, I can't tell you the name of it right now. Uh, maybe answer in the comments, but this is a true 4K camera on this one. This one features electronic stability. It does not have a mechanical gimbal. This is all electronic on here, and you will see the difference for sure. Like when the camera, when I move forward or backwards, the picture will tilt up and tilt down. And if I go side to side, it is going to rock back and forth as it happens but it also has a full 4k camera in it so in theory this one should deliver a better picture i guess we'll find out now what i did have to do on this is because it uses hevc high efficiency video compression h265 my software cannot open h265 it's too old i'm running an older version of premiere i'm not buying into this pay every month so that I can continue to use the software. I'm using the software that I purchased years ago and it only supports H.264. So I had to run it through a converter to convert it from H.265 to H.264, which probably degrades the picture slightly, although it is still very good. Basically though, what we're comparing here is we're comparing the camera. As you can see, as I 
shifted the drone forward and backwards and side to side, the picture rotates side to side as the, as the drone moves left or right, or it tips up and tips down as I start going forward or go backwards. Plus this one here, its height was limited. I couldn't go any, I'm at the maximum height because I've been geofenced because there's an airport like way over there in the distance. There's an airport, Boundary Bay Airport. So I've been geofenced at a hundred feet on this one. Which I can understand why they do this because they don't want people being idiots and putting the drones up there that would, uh, you know, could cause a collision with an aircraft. There's no way an airplane's gonna be flying below 100 feet, but on the approach to a runway, they could be at 400 feet as they're, as they're landing and taking off. So I can fully understand why um, they would have that ceiling limit. Although I should be far enough away, like I'm not within two miles of the airport. The airport is probably about maybe eight or nine miles away. It's not that close to me. Uh, I don't think you'd have small aircraft flying at 400 feet where I am, maybe closer to the airport, but not where I am, but that's the limits they put in place on this. But as you can see, as uh, as I shift the camera or as I shift it one way to the other, the picture rotates. And that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at uh, a drone is, is that going to be a problem? Is when you move it, is it rocking like this going to be an issue? If it is, you might want to look for one that's got the active gimbal which is my preferred, the active gimbal. Now, one thing it does is it creates multiple files. When the file gets to be two gigabytes in size, it creates a new file. And we just switched from one file to the other and it was seamless. It switched just before I started talking. To the new file and it was seamless so that works great if you're moving slow and it has different modes in it you see I just hit a hard stop there um, but if you're moving slow you can get good shots it's just and I'm zooming in now this is a zoom feature that's built into the drone itself where I can zoom in look at the guy's got the guy's got three holes on his rooftop golf course ridiculous that's me adjusting the camera and what's with the green on the the shed but yeah yeah there's a there's a staircase there and i believe there's an elevator over to the right as well now this is uh you know this is um lifestyles of the rich and famous right in my neighborhood we don't like to see this as homeowners because when you have a monstrosity put in like this it just puts the value of everybody's property up. And when the value of everybody's property goes up, the amount of money you gotta give to the city just for the right to live here goes up too because all the taxes go up accordingly. So yeah, the neighbors kind of get upset when something like this goes in just because it makes all of our property worth more, more money. Yes, I live on a beach. There you go. There's our beach. The tide is out right now. Anyway, that's, uh, say it will, it will pan around very nicely it's just when you start to move forward or move backwards like that i'm moving backwards now and you see the picture just shifted up because it's electronic stabilization not an active gimbal that the other one had once you're moving hey it's great but it's just starting stopping and if you're starting the side to side see i just stopped it and now of course it jumps that's the downside to electronic stabilization As you can see, I'm just, I'm doing this intentionally to show you guys the difference between the two of them. couple more shots I had it in the higher speed mode this time as opposed to uh, the slower speed for photography this is the sport mode so it re reacts a lot faster you can fly it quite a bit faster in this mode for doing tricks and stuff anyway uh, I'm gonna end it now 
you guys can watch the full review of this one coming up in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching this comparison. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.